Black Adam is the latest episode in Warner Brothers' We Couldn't Successfully we Imitate, Imitate the Disney, Disney Channel Network. And although it is my favorite film from this year, it is not without its flaws. It has a very strong opener in the first 30 minutes of the movie. It does this thing in CGI in which objects transform into other objects in order to have a transition. On top of that, it has shots with cut frames that transition into slow-mo shots. There's even one where a guy gets thrown off a cliff, which is very reminiscent of the 300. We get exposition about how Saudi Iranakistan was at one point an indomitable empire who had the power of the Allspark. The only problem is that they enslaved their own people, causing a revolt. And although our protagonist, Adam Black, is able to successfully beat the king, the king was also able to seal him away in a tomb. Until now. Did you expect a Hans Zimmer piece or something? Nope. This is the exact song that plays after the exposition dump at the beginning of the film. In case you haven't gotten in on the hints earlier, I think that this is very much a movie out of its own time. It definitely seems like something that came out of either the early 2010s or the late 2000s. The direction is very much reminiscent of the 300 at the beginning of the film. And for better or worse, you've definitely heard all of the songs that were played in this movie in some other piece of media before. We then see Saudi Iran Akistan in the present day. And they have flying cars! Well, not really. You see, Saudi Iran Akistan actually has a very valuable resource in it, which we won't be getting into. All you really need to know is that there is a heavy militia occupation of the state, and that the militia really wants to find Adam Black's tomb. We then get Lara Croft and her two brothers, Big Boss and Big Boss. They are a party in search of the Allspark that the king used to seal away Adam Black. However, the aforementioned militia tailed them there because she didn't expect the man who sold the world to sell her out. This forces Lara Croft to summon the man in black to protect her. What she didn't expect was to summon the biopic version of Johnny Cash, faithfully cast as Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We get a cool action scene of him destroying a bunch of his soldiers and saving Lara Croft. It's followed by a slow motion action scene outside of the tomb, where the AV team sees Dwayne Johnson's exaggerated swagger and confuses Johnny Cash for Mick Jagger. Amanda Waller then tasks the Great Lakes Avengers to go to Saudi Iran Akistan to defend the burger towns and the oil fields. The team lineup this time around consists of Monsoon, Lolly Killer 2076, Hawkman, and Doctor Strange. What's this, dear viewer? You expected me to say Doctor Fate? Of course Doctor Fate's not in this movie. It's obviously Doctor Strange as evident by him using mirror bullshit instead of an onk. On top of that, the god Nabu is nowhere to be seen or even heard in this movie, so of course it can't be Dr. Fate. Anyways, the Justice Society goes over to Black Adam to tell him that killing's a no-no as he lightning bolts down a bunch of mercenaries. But little did either of them know that Big Boss survived the cave -in. On top of that, he is a member of the militia in search of the Allspark. He uses Steven Universe, Lara Croft's son, as bait in order to get the Allspark from her. However, Black Adam and the Justice Society have to use force in order to find out where the hostage is located. Which, like, you know, kind of defeats the entire purpose of a hostage situation, but whatever. They go to the Diamond Dog Space in the Mind where a FIFA ad plays in the background. There it is revealed that Big Boss is actually one of the descendants of the king who sealed away Black Adam. Big Boss puts the Allspark on his head and says some words, but Black Adam kills him before he can do anything with it. The only problem is that he got so angry he turned into low-tier god. After almost having killed Lara Croft and Steven Universe, he realizes that in spite of all his rage, he is still just a rat in a cage. He agrees to the Justice Society locking him up in a prison controlled by Amanda Waller so that he is not able to harm anybody anymore. However, it turns out that Big Boss wanted to die in order to be able to unlock the Crown's true power of bringing Satan into the world. This forces Doctor Strange to break Black Adam out of prison so that he can have one final showdown against the bloodline of the Saudi Iranakistan dynasty. Doctor Strange dies, Black Adam drives out all foreign military influence on his country, and Henry Cavill gets another set of Warhammer minis. All's well that ends well. I could spend a good chunk of a day just talking about the plot holes and inconsistencies of the film, but EFAP already exists. The biggest problem I have with the Black Adam movie is that he is not Black Adam. It is implied that although he wants to be a hero, he could never be one because his rage is too great to control. The problem with this is that we only see that happen when he kills Ishmael. 
I dislike it even more because of the missed opportunities I see in some of the scenes. For example, when he's chasing around the hoverbikes, you can show him destroying everything around him just to get that one target. In fact, one of them happens near a cargo ship, and destroying a cargo ship would not only kill the people on board, which is roughly a hundred or so, but it would also mean that a lot of the people who rely on that cargo would starve to death or they wouldn't be able to make ends meet for their business. I was going to have an entire segment of the video just bitching about how I don't like the fact that the JSA was in this film without any prior setup, but apparently they're rebooting the entire franchise and to the animated films do introduce characters that you're supposed to know already to begin with, so it's like, eh. Problems I have with Fate is his design. Fate's helmet shouldn't make him look like fucking Cobra Commander, and the redesign for the Ankh to make it look a lot cooler and edgier, it makes it just look like shit. If they would have had a more simplified version of the Ankh, like for example the Injustice design, I would have been a lot more fine with it. One of the more interesting aspects of the movie is the themes and how they incorporate it. One of the most prevalent themes throughout Black Adam is that freedom is only marginally better than oppression. Although there is the possibility of one individual destroying an entire empire out of their own volition, as a result of having freedom, Having entire countries under the control of Inner Gang, or having entire countries under the control of Amanda fucking Waller, is arguably even worse considering how corrupt they are. However, the reason why I say it is the best film of 2022 AD, the year of our lord, Anno Domini, is due to the prevalent themes of anti-Semitism throughout the movie. The most obvious example is that the occupation of Saudi Iranakistan is actually the occupation of Palestine. However, I think the most damning piece of evidence is the use of a popular song by anti-Semitic rapper Kanye. And of course, the song used is power to highlight the theory that the Jews are in control of every major event in the 20th and 21st century. If you listen to the song, you'll know that it is about how all these things that we have at our disposal are amazing, and that people during the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ would have never imagined to be possible. If you look at the scene again, you'll notice that it's not Black Adam who has access to this technology or power, as Kanye puts it, but it is the PMC that has access to power. From this point of view, we can see that the song is used to question the authority and power of the Israeli people. Polymerizing this with what we learned earlier, we can conclude that the final message of Black Adam is that although Israeli government is more structured than Palestinian government, it has an underlying corruption that can no longer be ignored. And Black Adam, though claiming not to be a hero at the very end of the movie, says he is a protector of his own country. This is a very important message because it tells everybody, regardless of their past, that they can still protect their countries. And I couldn't think of a better message to tell the world in the year of our Lord, 2020, Anno Domini.